from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, everybody. Give God a praise. I don't know what's going on this morning, but for the spirit of heaviness, we should put on the garment of praise. God is great and greatly to be praised. He's awesome. He's magnificent. He's given us his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. We have been justified. Hallelujah. We've been justified by faith. Praise God. Therefore, we have peace with God and access. Amen. I mean, no, we can get to the throne right now. Amen. We don't have to go through a man. Praise God, a woman. We can get to Christ right now. And I don't know about you, but my soul is just so, so overjoyed with the Lord on today. And I just thank God for his presence in my life on today. I thank God for his presence in your life on today. I thank God for our visitors on this morning. Uh, you know, you're not here by accident. God has, has positioned you to be in this place this morning. Everybody that is here because God wants to speak into your life on this morning. Praise God. He wants to tell you some things that, that, that you've been questioning. Praise God. And you didn't know how God sometimes is going to answer some of your prayers. But I thank God for everyone who's being in the house on the Lord this morning. And I'm grateful. It's been 16 weeks now since my brother has went on to be with the Lord. Was, was, was killed. In the car accident, it's been 16 weeks now. Those Fridays keep coming faster and faster. But I thank God that for the spirit of heaviness, as I do what the Bible tells me to put on a garment of praise, God lifts the heaviness. And it's a lot more bearable. Yeah, and God, as we're asking God for revival in our life, I'm asking God for understanding. I'm asking him for strength. And I'm asking him for more grace. And guess what? He, he's not a man that he should lie. No, the son of man need to repent. If he says it, he's going to do it. And he's been doing it. He, I haven't been asking God, what for? I haven't said, God, what for? Why? Why? I haven't said, God, why me? Oh, God, just tell me. Can you, can you explain to me how you think? Because when I understand how you think, I understand that my ways are not your ways. Your ways are not my ways. And as high as the heavens are from the earth, that's how far God's mind is from my mind. So he's always doing something according to his own will. And if we, we love God, then we love God. We love daddy. We don't always like what our physical dad's done growing up. But guess what? Father knows best. And he's doing something in my life, my mother's life, my father's life, my, my sibling's life. Praise God. My brother's wife and his nephews. And, and I found he's doing something in our life. And guess what? Through the pain, I still like what he's doing. As hard as it to say, that was hard to say just now, but I like what he's doing. He's drawing us closer to him. And as we get closer to him, we get closer to each other. That's awesome, y'all. You can't say you're getting close to God and not getting closer to your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's a lie. You're defeating yourself. Self-deception is the worst form of deception. But I just thank God for his grace on this morning. We've been talking about personal revival. And I don't know about you, but revival is going on on the inside of Ryan Gass. And I pray that revival is going on inside of you as well. We're going to look at Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, chapter 1, verse 5. We're going to see what it looks like when people have been revived. We'll see what it looks like when people have set their face like a flint to just listen and obey God's word. We'll see what it looks like. Book of Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us, and the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Acadia. 
For from a, you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Acadia, but also in every place, your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turn from God, how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Praise God. We're going to talk about examples of faith. Look at your neighbor and say, are you an example of faith? And now look at the other neighbor on the other side, the one you didn't want to look at the first time, and ask them, say, are you an example of faith? Well, hopefully they said yes, and if not, by the end of the sermon, hopefully. Have a seat. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. My mama buddy back there, sister Mary back there. Praise God. God bless you, sister. Amen. Marilyn, we miss her. What's your first name again? Marilyn. I call you Mary all the time. I've been calling you Mary for two years, and you've been answering to it. Well, please forgive me. Marilyn, praise God. It's so good to see you. We love you. Amen. I love you. Miss you. Always a great spirit, man, in the, in, in the house. Amen. As I said earlier, we've been, we've been in Psalms 119, and we've been talking about 101 revival. You know, revival uh, is usually a set of meetings. You know, people say we're going to have a revival in August, a spring revival. We're going to spring forth, or we're going to have a fall revival, fall back, or whatever. But, you know, revival should be something that's going on in the life of a Christian on a daily. Well, we should be getting revived. The word, the Bible said the word is it's like fire. Jeremiah says, shut up in my bones. David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. And you could encourage yourself in the Lord if you get in the word every day, because the Bible is actually a book. That's the only book in the world that every time you read it, the author is present with you. The author is right there with you. When you're sitting down reading that Bible in the morning, guess what? The author, God, the omnipresent God is right there with you. Amen. He's not only there with you as the omnipresent God, he's there with you as the omnipotent God, the God that knows everything. Amen. He's there as the omnipotent God, the God, the, the, the omnipotent God, the God that has all power and all control. He's the God there with you that never changes at all. And he's the God that's there that's the all-powerful, sovereign God. Amen. And he's the God that's the immutable God that there, he, he never changes. And so when you're reading the Bible, you should get excited. But today we're going to talk about uh, these, these great examples of faith in the church at Thessalonica. You can find that story in Acts chapter 17. It talks about how, how Paul went to, to Thessalonians and he entered into the temple of God. Praise God. Let, let's go there real quick. Let's go to, to this Thessalonians so we can get a little back drop on this. Acts chapter 17. A lot of the epistles that were written were written for churches that Paul had started. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 17. Amen. He talks about how, how they passed and how they came to Thessalonica. And, and, and he stopped by the synagogue. And Paul, being a Jew, praise God, he, he, he walked into the synagogue. Verse 2 talks about how he went unto them three, three, three Sabbaths. That means three Sundays in a row. Somebody say 21 days. And, and he reasoned with them out, out of the scriptures and he opened it and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that Jesus, whom I preach unto you, he said, is Christ. Amen. They, and they had already began to, to try to dumb Paul's message down. Uh, but he had said that the Christ, that, that what he preached to them was the Christ. And in verse four, he says, and some of them believe and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude of the chief women, not a few, but the Jews, we always got a butt in it. I mean, you know when revival is going on and when God is doing something, you always got a butt. Hey, Amen. you got friends like that? You got friends like that? You tell them, girl, I'm getting ready to do this. I'm, I'm getting ready to do this. I promise God has put this in my spirit and I'm finna go for it. You told your partners, man, God gave me a vision for something. And they said, yeah, girl, but 
So, so, so you always got a butt going on. You, you got those butts in there. And that, that's, a, that's a strong contrast. But he says, but the Jews which believe not move with envy. Remember, y'all, when you come out of revival, when God strengthens you and when God uh, gets you to the place where you said, I'm going to be loyal to God and I'm going to be dedicated to God. Remember, you're going to have some butt people and everybody's not going to believe the way that you believe. But if you, the, the Jews, they didn't believe they were moved with envy and they took it to them certain lewd fellows and of the Bezos sort, a gathering, a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason, a certain brethren, unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason has received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. They want to politicize it. See, when the gospel is going for, how is it that the world, praise God, who has taken Jesus and God out of every public entity, they want to publicize it. They want to politicize it. They want to make Christianity political. This is what they were doing. They were saying, now you're coming against the king. Now you're coming against the government. Now, see, the problem with the world that we live in is they haven't acknowledged the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The problem is that think the person that sits in the Oval Office is the person that runs the world. But no, it's not the person that runs uh, the earth and lives in the Oval Office. It's somebody that rides on the cloud. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But they wanted to politicize it. They wanted to make it politics. And, and they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and the others, they let them go. And the brothers immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So we, we find that, that Paul and them didn't stop preaching, even though people opposed them. They went into Thessalonica. So this is the letter that Paul, while on the second missionary journey, the church of Thessalonica is Thessalonians, this is the letter that he wrote to them. But when we talk about internal revival, it starts inside you all and, and it works its way out into every area of your life. Anybody need to be revived today? Any, anybody need their spirit rejuvenated? Anybody need to, to be shaken again, need to be stirred up in the things of God? Then, then let's look at these great examples at the church of Thessalonica. And let's, let's take some notes on these people. Let's, let's see what it was about these people that were, were different, right? So, so as Christians, we are, we are to model the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're going to be a great example of, 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 of a Christian, you need to model Jesus Christ, how did they get to this place? These people at Thessalonica that was excited about the word of God and that were, that were on fire for God. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. I think this has something to do with it. And I used to always quote this scripture before I minister because it, it, this, 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 this verse right here is a very profound scripture. And if you take it to heart, every time you walk into a church service, it will bless you. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Paul wrote them, he said, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, Paul said, when we went and preached to y'all, when we went and taught y'all the things of the Old Testament, they didn't have the New Testament. So when they went and preached, all they quoted from was from the Old Testament. He says that when we got to you and when you heard of us, you received it not as if it were words of men. See, people look at this Bible as if it's just ink and paper, like it's a Moby Dick book, like it's some old crazy fiction book. Amen. They don't look at it as it is the word of God. Look what he says. But as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Paul said, I'm so glad that y'all didn't just look at me as the apostle Paul and look at me as the preacher, Ronnie Gaston, or look at, look at any pastor. But I thank God that when you receive the word, you didn't receive it as if it came from man. The Bible says no words in the Bible are of any private interpretation. What does that mean? The Bible is not Paul's interpretation of what God said. Paul, when he wrote, he wrote exactly what God told him to write. 
So when the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God, it means all scripture is God breathed. It means God breathed to man's and God, God man received it in his heart and he wrote it down on paper. So when you read the word of God, you are actually reading the mind of God. Come on, y'all. If you want to be revived, everybody, you, 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 you got to find out what God is saying in the earth and what God is saying about, about your situation. Amen. So, so these Thessalonians, they remember, we have to model Christ, right? We have to model Christ. But these people of Thessalonica, they, they wore the kingdom clothes well. They were godly. They had godly attitudes, y'all. They had godly actions. I'm asking you today, are, are you a good example of Christ? Because this church, they model kingdom clothes well. What do kingdom clothes look like? They look like godly attitudes and godly actions. Somebody say kingdom clothes. When they acted or reacted to tragedy, they made, they made Jesus look good. How do you react to tragedy? How do you react to crisis? On your job, whether you were in job, at the job doing corona, in the pandemic, how did Jesus look to your coworkers? The language they used made Jesus look good. The way they conducted themselves at home made Jesus look good. Could the same be said of us? Our neighbors on both sides? The people live next door to us in the apartment? What would they say? Would they say we model Christ well? Amen. How many know we live in a governed, ruled universe? We live in a governed, ruled universe. Now, remember, Apostle Paul said that when they received the word, they didn't receive the word of God as if they received it from man. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. He's saying it, this, this, this word that God given us today, it'll work in us, too, if we believe. Right? So we live in this, this rule-governed universe. But when rules are followed or ignored, how many know patterns emerge? Somebody say patterns. Boy, this is this real good. I, I need you to think about this now. I want you to think about this. So, so the church of Thessalonica, they received the word as it was. It came from God. They obeyed it. But guess what? On the flip side, sometimes people ignore what God say? How many know we have made church a place for, it's like a smoker's board Christianity. It's like I can come and I can get all the blessings that make us rich and add no sorrow. I can get all this thing that all things are working together for the good to them that love God and to them that are called according to the purpose. I can get the verse that says that, that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I can get the verse that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But 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 with the, but, but the other verse over there in this section over here, like the vegetables, it, it say fear God and keep his commandments. I don't, I don't want to touch that part of the smokes, boy. I, I want to stay over here with this meat, this, this, this beef and this corned beef, right? I want to stay over here with this fried chicken. I want to, it, but, but guess what? True Christianity is not smokers board in nature. God has some outlines and some guidelines, and, and we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a governed, ruled universe, right? But when these rules are followed or ignore, ignored, patterns emerge. So to understand what God wants from us, we must identify the world's patterns, refuse to conform to them, and be transformed into a God-pleasing pattern of living. Man, that makes sense. Man, so when people are looking for real money, they don't look at counterfeit money. They look at real money so that when counterfeit come, they're able to detect it. So when we're looking for genuine, how come we're looking for genuine Christianity among hypocritical people. How come we expecting the real to come out of the fake? Why don't we try to find someone to mimic ourselves after that's serving the Lord to the best of their broken ability? Why are we looking for somebody that says, I can't make it to the party of the club tonight. I can't make it to go over to this get together tonight because I'm going to read my Bible and spend some time with the Lord. Why not we looking at them? When we see them people, we say they think they're better than everybody else. It don't take all that. Yes, it do take all that and more because every martyr, every disciple that followed Jesus except for John, they died for their belief. 
Jesus says, if I have suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. Jesus says, I learned obedience by the things that I suffered. See, this walk, this faith walk ain't no cake walk. And faith that can't be tested cannot be trusted. And God is asking us here today, are you a great example? Are you modeling Christ the way we're supposed to model Christ? Come on now. Remember, we got rules because we got a king and we live in a kingdom. And God has a kingdom agenda, which is the visible demonstration of God's comprehensive rule in every area in our life. That means we need to be demonstrating what God, who is above and transcends the normal way of thinking of man, we're living by his rules and how his standards. Come on, y'all. I don't want to lose you. But I would say be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of his mind. Guess what? There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Remember, the church of Thessalonica, and we're going to get into the verses. Praise God. Jeremiah 6 and 16. I love to hear them pages flipping. Praise God. The Bible says, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. He's telling Jeremiah, stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old path. Right? Where is a good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. It don't make no sense to read the Bible every day and don't walk the way in that it tells us to walk. Remember now, when you receive the word, don't receive it as if it's coming from me, but receive it as it is the word of God that effectually worketh in you that believe. Powerful, y'all. How many want to be a good example for the Lord Jesus Christ? How many want to see your family saved? Guess what? What if you are the thing that is triggering your family not to want to go to church? What if you are the opposite of a good example, which is a bad example? What if your attitude, your demeanor, the way you act and the way you judge and be hypocritical? What if the way that you act is the very reason why your family won't walk into the house of the Lord? We're going to change that today because we're going to look at these, these people in Thessalonica, man, and we're going to find out. Praise God that they were great examples. The Bible said we need to be asking the Lord, how should we, how should we walk? We should be asking the Lord, which way should we go? We should be asking the Lord, what should we say? We should be asking the Lord for wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. So when you don't know what to do, you ask him who know, always know what to do. Ask him, what should I do? So when you don't know what to do, ask him who always know what to do. What should I do? And he'll tell you what to do. But he says, don't ask me what to do. And I show you the way and don't go therein. Don't be like them in Jeremiah and, and, and say that, 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 that we didn't do it. Amen. How a person receives the word of God will determine the effect that the word has on him or her. How you receive it. Do you receive the word of God according to his content do we go and look again after the preacher have preached or do we take it at first value and say man it sound good i got happy in my emotions but did it get into my soul and did it sink down into my spirit because guess what the spirit only relates to spiritual things so when i give you the word scripture line on line precept on precept your spirit man receives it and it's downloaded to be used at the appropriate time. When I get it in my emotions, which is in my solical area, which is my will, my emotions, and my mind, I get all happy and I get all charged up. But if I don't receive it in my spirit, man, it's not going to birth out in the spirit realm, but it's going to come out in my emotions. It's going to come out in my will. It's going to come out in my mind. Y'all stand with me? Amen. We could... We can, we, can, we can find out what God wants for us to do. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. We can know. A lot of us have been hitting and missing when it comes to life. We've been hitting and missing. We on for two or three months. Next thing you know, we off. Now, you got to remember something. Remember I said that when we obey the rules or ignore the rules, 
patterns emerge. Sometimes we can do a thing, and because ain't nothing happened, we think ain't nothing wrong. Come on, somebody. We consistently doing a thing that spiritually is not what we should be doing according to God's word. But because we don't get hit the first time we do it, a pattern is established. So the church of Thessalonica, they established a righteous pattern because the word was the final, excuse me, authority on everything that they did. Somebody say amen. Jeremiah 29 and 12 says, Then shall she call upon me and go, shall go, and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. God says, listen, this was after that verse that everybody quote. I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Everybody loved that scripture, but we don't know God was getting ready to put him into exile for 70 years. After the 70 years are over, I still know the things I have towards you. So we got to go through some things. We've always quoted that scripture uncontextually and been like, man, God knows the thought he has towards me, thoughts of peace. He does. But he said, I'm taking you through something right now. So you're traveling some roads that you haven't traveled. You got to come down through Michigan City, way from California, 2,600 miles away. You got to come down here and find out what God is trying to tell you and what he said in your life. Then he gets you to a church, crazy, wild preacher, praise God, holler, are you a great example of Jesus Christ? Then you begin to ask, and you're reflecting back, man, did things happen here because I wasn't a great example there? Or was I a great example to the fact that God now is expanding me, and he wants me to be a great example here as well? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for dropping her down, putting her in our sermon. Then you shall seek me and find me when you shall search with me with your whole heart. <laughs> Come on. You cannot do two things great. Bo Jackson played football and baseball. Deion Sanders played baseball and football. But, but, but you, you can't put all of your faculties into two different things. Bible said double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. I hope y'all get, get, can we focus in? I told you I used to train a girl. She plays for Seton Hall. I trained her next door at my gym, and, and she get all discombobulated, and I will too in the gym, and she'll say, Brother Ron, bring it in. Bring it in. She used to do that. Her name is Eden, man. She's a good, great, great, great volleyball player, but, but we got we to gotta bring this thing in. Somebody said we got to dial in. If you're searching for God with your whole heart, it's taking up a lot of your time. It's taking up a lot of your energy. But he says, only when you search for me with your whole heart will you find me. Say no hide and go seek. God said, you can find me, but the prerequisite is that you search for me with your whole heart. How many know you can find God in just about everything? So if you're looking for him, because God is omnipresent, he's everywhere. If we notice God in some places that he wants us to know him in, as soon as we find out he's there, we'll leave. Y'all get that when you get home. If you saw God everywhere you go, I guarantee you start leaving some places you go. But he's sitting up there because he's king of king, and he's omnipresent, and he wants you to know that he's every with you, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even down through some of them places that you went that you shouldn't have went, he still was there with you. But God wants to convict your heart to the place where you say, you know what? This place real just ain't satisfactory to me no more. This place I'm going to just ain't don't bring me the joy that it used to bring me no more. Sitting at home on my couch on the side of the bed, looking at God's word and faith value is bringing me more joy than hanging out with a bunch of folk that ain't going in the same direction I'm going in. I said, I want more of God and I'm going after more of God because I'm going to search for him with my whole heart. Is anybody with me? Amen. 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 We should seek the Lord, just like these people did in Thessalonica. Welcoming God's word with anticipation and regularly, regularly mining it in order to be transformed by it through obedience. I want to be transformed through obedience. Anybody want transformation? Bible say don't be conformed to this world I mean don't be poured into a mold of this world but be transformed that means change from one condition or state to another by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good the acceptable and perfect will of the Lord how do I do that 
I got to take God's word at face value and I got to say God's word is non-negotiable. If whatever he has to say about every area, you have to say this is what he means, not this is what he might mean. See, Satan does the same thing he did in the garden. He said, did God really mean that? Yeah, God really did mean the day that you eat of that, you shall surely die. But see, when we get off on these patterns sometimes, Adam and Eve sin, they went and hid themselves, right? They begin to play the name game or the blame game. Adam, where are you? That woman you gave me. Woman, where are you? Serpent beguiled me. He tricked me. Serpent said, I'm good. I'm going to take this power. I'm gone. He went rolling off into the wilderness. So when Jesus come up on the scene, got filled with the Holy Ghost, where did he go? He went back to the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. So everything Satan was given over by the people of God, initially, Jesus got it back. Jesus got it back. Now we live for this Jesus. I don't want to get off faith. So how did they receive it? So how they received the word is what made them great examples of the faith. First Thessalonians 1 and 5 says, Our gospel came not unto you in word only. Listen, everybody. There's five points here. You can look at them. Not in word only. Write word down. But in power. Write power down. And in the Holy Ghost. Write the Holy Ghost down. And in much assurance. Write much assurance down. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake right lifestyle now man you can change and transform nations you can change and transform people when we use this this method we have what's called sequential firing in personal training sequential firing so that means from the ground up my calves have to uh, fire and as my calves fire my quads fire my quads fire my goots fire so it's sequential firing it's the same thing when we minister in the word of god right so the word of god needs to be first and foremost if we minister and it would change people's lives and in order to be great examples paul and them came and laid a great foundation apostle paul and silas came and they were preaching the word first they were preaching the word of god to the people that was at Thessalonica. The reason America and the reason the world is like it is right now, we have stopped preaching the word of God and we have begun to tell people methods and ideologies and physiologies and we begin to use human reasoning and situational ethics and we begin to use all these things that are not the word of God to try to describe God. They sound good, but they're not good and sound. Apostle Paul said, when we came to you, uh, we didn't come just in word. But, but in power. Somebody said we need power. See, it ain't about just the word. It's about what word you're talking about. See, the gospel is the power of God. That's why Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. What kind of power? It's the dynamite. It's the destructive power. But it's the dynamo, the reconstructive power. I don't know about you, but I was a sinner in every area of my life. When I confessed my sin before God and says I'm a chief sinner, he blew up those areas that were destroying me. But he also said, guess what, Ronnie? I called you before the foundation of this earth. So I already fixed you before you got broke. All you have to do is acknowledge that I'm the fixer. And when you acknowledge that I'm the fixer, then I put you back in your proper place. So when you wanted to be all the other P words, whatever they were, player or whatever, now you're a preacher. Because I'm God and I don't call you according to what you become. I'm God. I call you according to what I created. I didn't create the food that you have become. I created the preacher that you are. I didn't cre create the liar that you had become, ladies and men and gentlemen. I didn't create the thief that you had become. I, I didn't create the party animal that you become, but I created prophetess. I, I created evangelists. I, I created teachers. So that's how I call you. Come here, David. Chief sinner. Come here, man after God's own heart. What? David broke all the rules. Come here, liar, Abraham. That's my sister. She's fine as a mug. If I tell her who they is, I know they're going to try to holler at her. Who is that? This is my sister. 
Come here, liar. I ain't going to call you a liar. I'm going to call you the father of many nations. Come here, coward, Gideon. You a coward, man. You over at the wine press, pressing wheat over by the wine press. You supposed to be over there making wine, pressing grapes, but you making wheat. What's going on? Coward. Mm -mm. Guess what? You a mighty man of valor. Come here, mighty man of valor. Who are you listening to? What are people calling you? What have they called you? Don't let nobody call you and determine the path of your life, who you are. God has already determined in eternity path who you are. And it's not based on what you've done. It's not who you are. Satan is a liar. But when he came, he came with word, y'all. It came with power, that Holy Ghost. And he came with the Holy Ghost, right? Because what the Holy Ghost does, when you give somebody a word, right? When you try to be a great example, you, first of all, you start with the word. And then with the word, you understand that it's the power in the word. You have to be transparent with God, though. You have to tell him the issues that you're really dealing with. So allow him to blow them things up. But then also as he blow them up, he also reconstruct those areas of your life that's been torn down. And when your shelves have been restored your shelves have been cleared off because of hurt and past and pain and anxiety and distress then he'll begin to reload your shelves again and he'll restore you see the holy ghost comes to reveal what the word said because jesus said the holy ghost is going to teach you all things all things that i've showed you so now we got the holy ghost and then in much assurance somebody say my convictions as you know, what matter of men, we were among you. Somebody say my lifestyle. Amen. Amen. So they received the word and it says, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy. So there was spiritual power that came forth, y'all. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5. First verse 1. It's talking about this power. And I, brother, when I come unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Paul said, when I came to y'all, this is a different church. This is a church at, at Corinth. They had a lot of issues. They had immorality issues. One man was sleeping with his, with his, with his father's wife. They had a lot of stuff going on in the church. There was a lot of strife and a lot of envy in this church. Praise God. One liked it, this pastor. The other one liked it, that pastor. The other one liked that pastor. Paul said, I didn't baptize none of you jokers. One say you're Paul. One say you're Apollos. Paul said, there's too much division in your church. He said, I want to talk to y'all like grown folk, but I can't. I got to talk to y'all like kids because he said they was yet still carnal. But Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't come with excellence of speech or wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, when I come, I'm coming with Jesus and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and with fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Now imagine Apostle Paul, they say if he was alive today, he would have to what is equivalent to five doctorate degrees. Paul was astute. Paul had matriculated through the institutions of higher education. Paul was very educated. But yet said, Paul said, I didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. You know the world is missing today demonstration of the spirit and of the power what is the word missing today signs and wonders and miracles what is the word people speaking with the word of god with much assurance because they've been convicted about it anybody been delivered in here before anybody here been set free from a thing before if you have then the world should know that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony what's your testimony now we get saved you were loud when you was on top now you seem like you're on the bottom now we get quiet no, we should get louder the lower we go. Yeah, yeah, we should get the lower we go, we should get louder. Amen. Amen. Because the man said, Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, that's a shut up, man. Jesus ain't paying no attention to you. Jesus ain't paying attention to you. Jesus, shut up. He got louder. But the louder he got, the closer Jesus came. So how, how many calling out Jesus' name now? How many calling on him when you're down and out? See, we want to call him when we up here. 
and say, God doing this. Look what he's doing. But really, you're patting yourself on the back. The truth of the matter is God brings some of us low. We don't come with enticing words and elegancy of speech, but we come in demonstration of power and of the Holy Ghost. Saying that I can't do nothing. I failed in every area, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I have on the whole armor of God, you say, that I may be able to stand the wiles against the devil and put on the whole armor and stand. Man, I'm telling you, man, this thing is so rich down in my spirit. This reviving message that God has been ministering to us have shook me up and woke me up again. Even the areas of my body that have begun to, to break down my legs and my back and everything. God is rejuvenating even that. He's just throwing that in for, for a treat. You really want your spirit, man, back rejuvenated. He really wants your spirit back intact. Get yourself in church, somebody that's watching out here. Get in somebody's church and say you want to serve. Amen. Paul was going from church to church, and he was going around establishing churches, and he said, I don't come with enticing words. I'm not trying to woo you with my words. I'm not trying to present a gospel that you need a dictionary to figure it out. It's simple. Somebody died for your sinful self. That's what he said. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. There was peace in the place. Not only power, there was peace. He says, and, and in much assurance. Somebody say deep convictions. That's deep convictions. That's, that's having deep convictions. Have you, are you truly convinced? Only by way of convictions do you leave impressions. We wonder why we ain't impressed nobody. No, we didn't post it 100 dog on different posts, but we still getting the same amount of likes. Why are you getting the same amount of likes? Because what you're posting, you're not even convinced about. If I ain't convinced about it, because see, if people know you're convinced about it, they say you're being about it. But if, I ain't, if I'm convinced about it, I'm being about it. Again, if I'm convinced about it, I'm being about it. So if I'm convinced about the joy of the Lord is my strength, even in my darkest hour when I'm crying all night long about my brother's death, I wake up in the morning and I say, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to give you praise. And if I run across anybody that's lost a loved one, God, then I'm going to bless the Lord all my soul and all that's in me. I'm going to bless your holy name, but I'm going to bless the Lord all my soul and I'm going to forget not all your benefits, God. You still forgave all of my iniquities. You still healed all of my diseases. You still took me out of the Mari clay and set me on a solid foundation. You still know my framework that I'm just broken dust, God, and you're still moving in my life. Still moving in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, look at Colossians chapter 2. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. You got to get convicted about this thing. It got to become real to you. Amen. You got to come in word. Amen. You, you, you got to come in power. We, we got to come in the Holy Ghost. We got to come in much assurance. You got to be assured that this thing is real. I'm just as sure of this gospel as I was. If the, if the coat would put me on the outside of any tackle, I was going to get that quarterback. I'm more assured that Jesus Christ have tackled everything that Satan has tried to do against my life. And I'm on the winning team because what Christ have done. I am just assured about God and what he's done than I am about anything in this world. I'm more convinced of God than I am anything in this world. My job can fall tomorrow. Your family can walk out on you today. People can begin to desert you and not turn their back on you in a deaf ear in a day. But God will never leave me. He will never forsake me. My daughter died six years ago. He was right there with me. Cancer in between. He was right there with me. My brother just died. He's still there with me. And I ain't the only one got a story like that. So I ain't trying to put myself on the back. I'm saying God is real in me. And I'm seeing him closer and closer every time some tragedy strikes. Every time tragedy strikes. Thank you, Father. Colossians 2 and 2 says their hearts might be comforted, being knitted together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. That's the key, y'all. Understand, full assurance of understanding 
to the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God. Once we begin to understand the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God, what is God doing in the earth? The Bible says the secret things are unto God. In Exodus, Deuteronomy 29 and 29, but the things that are revealed are revealed to us and our children's children, right? The secret things are is the word mysterion, which actually means mysteries. The mysteries are unto God. Some things you will never find out. But the things that are revealed, let's get them and gravitate to them. Somebody said, let's get it. Let's get it. So he says, acknowledgement of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all, look at this, in Christ, in whom all are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Man, you want full assurance? Dig in Christ. Are you digging in them? Digging in Christ? Digging in the knowledge of Christ? Digging in who he is? Digging in where he come from? Where did he come from? John 17 and 5 tells you where he came from. It's let you know that Jesus pre-existed. Before the birth, let's go to John chapter 17 and verse 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Some secret things, but there's some things that's been revealed to us, and it's right in his word. Jesus said, Father, I need you to glorify me. I need you to glorify. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee. Where at? Before what? Wow. Ain't that deep, y'all? <laughs> Jesus said, yeah, I'm going to tell everybody where I was if they, if they ain't got it, if they ain't get the memo, the email. I'm going to tell everybody where I was before I came out of Mary. Amen. Out with the Father. Amen. Before the world began. Amen. So, he says, in Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. Somebody say full assurance. Let's look at Hebrews 10 and 21. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. We want to be good examples, y'all. Having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. It says in verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart of full assurance of faith. If you want to be a good example of faith, we got to draw closer with a heart that's full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Yeah. Somebody say power. Yeah, we got power, man. You got peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The Bible says, let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Reason people ain't got no peace? I have no Christ. Come on, y'all. We want to be good examples. We want to say that Jesus, man, is in charge of everything. He's in controlling everything. We want to have full assurance that his word already figured it out. God already gave us the answers to all the tests. All we got to do is fill in the blank with your life. Amen. Folks hate you. He said, love them. Folks don't forgive you. Forgive them. Treat good who despitefully misuse you. And then you like Christ. Then you're a great example. Not only that was it peace, but there were some great patterns established. They left, they left godly patterns to follow. Am I leaving a godly pattern to follow? Are you leaving a godly pattern to follow? He says, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Let's go back to Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 5. As ye know what manner of men we were among you. My still. They, 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 they said in verse 5, for our gospel came unto you in power and the Holy Ghost full assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. 
What are you sacrificing for the sake of your children, your relatives, your neighbors, your coworkers? He said, we was being who we were for your sake. They considered their self now dead. So somebody else could live off of their deadness. But they was alive unto themselves. They were dead to themselves, but they were alive unto God. Amen? Amen. Bible said, if you're going to come after me, you got to do what? Deny yourself. You got to take up your cross. You got to follow me. Right? So being a great example is following patterns. Apostle Paul and Silas had established a pattern for these people to follow. And it says, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word. Now, guess what? Did a lot of people follow Jesus for the right friends? If Jesus was here today, would he have more Facebook followers, Facebook friends, or would he have more, more followers? Which one would he have? Jesus said, if you come after me, you got to deny yourself, take up your cup and follow me. Would people want to follow that? He said, if you're drinking my blood and eating my flesh, if you don't, you ain't got no parts of me. Oh, man, I'm up. I ain't following you. You ain't, you ain't the one. Amen. But Paul and them put such an example out that people were willing to follow them. Amen. The Bible says, be imitators of Christ. And he says, so you were examples to all that believe in Macedonia. And watch this, verse 8. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Acadia, but also in every place. Your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not even to speak of anything. They said, man, that we, we, we did discipling. We, we did some follow-up. We gave you the word. We walked it out before you in full, of, with full assurance. We were convicted that Jesus Christ is the only hope for this world today. And I don't care who you are. If that ain't your conclusion, if you haven't drew that conclusion that Jesus is the only hope for this world, then you're sadly mistaken because nothing else is going to heal this world's problem because this world's problem is not skin. This world's problem is sin. And until we get our hearts converted and renewed by Jesus Christ in his spirit, we are going to consistently and continuously be selfish is in nature and the love of many will continue to wax cold because iniquity is abounding. Yeah. Amen. amen. Ain't get no amen but it's out is cool. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16. He said I write not these things to shame you but as my beloved sons I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ Yet have ye not many fathers, for in Jesus Christ I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul was saying that I, 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 didn't, I didn't dedicate it and I didn't sold out for Christ. It's cool. He said, go and follow me. That's the goal. That's what I'm shooting for. I don't just say follow me and I ain't got my stuff together. Praise God. Paul was strong in his convictions. Even in 1 Corinthians 1 and 11, he said, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. And he said, all this stuff came through affliction, much affliction. Jesus said this stuff was going to happen. He said, if you follow him and if you're a great example, then affliction is going to happen. And John chapter 16, verse 21 says this, a woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow. Guess what, y'all? You're going through something. Somebody say growing pain. Amen. Somebody said, you, we, we're going through, we're going through travail. She's sorrow. So you're going through a time. You may be in your, in, in your third trimester, right? You might, you, you might be dilating about 10. I know I heard about it, but I don't know about it, but, but you may be dilating. You might be up there and you're ready to give birth to this baby. But he said, because her hour is not yet come, but as soon as she has delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world. So you're going through this right now. But as soon as God do what he's going to do in your life, you ain't going to remember what you've even been through. So you, 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 you're a good follower of Christ because you know that it, it's some pain involved in, in getting to the promise. See, the only problem is, is we got this great promise and we got the fulfillment of the promise, but we got that time in between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise. And that's what we got to wait on the Lord and be a good courage. 
But through that, there's going to be some persecution. And through that, there's going to be some hard times. Like you giving birth to a baby. But guess what? You're giving birth to something spiritual. You ain't giving birth to nothing carnal. John 16 and 23 says this. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 3 says that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourself know that we are appointed thereunto. That's powerful, y'all. We was appointed to go through this. If you're a true example of Jesus Christ, no wonder your whole family against you. No wonder folks that was your friend, now they didn't turn their back on you. We should count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of our faith is working patience. Let patience have its perfect work, right? So we can be entire, not wanting anything. Amen. Are you great examples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul said this, everything that has happened to me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel. You are right where you need to be. People talk about, man, I'm going to Cali. Man, I'm going to Atlanta. Man, I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm going here, I'm going there. But guess what? As soon as you open up the suitcase, you ain't packing you. So no matter where I end up at, if I got a terrible disposition over here, I'm going to have one over there. If I got a bad attitude here, I'm going to have one over there. But if I'm a great example of Christ over here, I'm going to be a great example of Christ over there. If I'm a great worker here, I'm going to be a great worker there. If I'm going to testify for Christ here, I'm going to testify for him there. I can't wait till I get to South Africa on a missionary journey. You won't even talk to folks on the block. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord God, for your word today. We just bless your name for our visitors on today, God. We thank you that we are all striving to be great examples. And God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for full assurance and convictions. And we also thank you, Father God, for our lifestyles. God, allow us to speak the word only. And God, allow the power of God to blow up the things in folks' life that need to be blowed up, including ourselves. And, and to rebuild the things that need to be built up. And then ask the Holy Ghost to reveal what you're doing to us, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us have true convictions, God. That after you fulfill your, 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 your goal in one area of our life, you move on to the next area of our life. Let us trust you for that, Lord God. And have full assurance. And then, Lord God, allow us to walk it out before people. What a great example looks like to the world. God, we thank you, Father God. I lift up my family, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, my whole family, the Gaston family as a whole, God, I lift up even the family, Lord God, of, of, of uh, Sister Flowers, Sister Becky, Sister Kathy, God, I just pray for them to death, the Merryweathers, Lord God, just so many, Lord God, I, I just can't name them all, but, but everyone that has lost a loved one, Lord God, of recent, everyone that has a loved one incarcerated, we pray for whoever's incarcerated, one that's, someone that's been killed, Lord God, we, we pray for their families, Lord God, we just pray, God, that God, we, we, we put the guns down and pick the Bibles up, but God, the only way we're going to do that is that there be examples in the community, Lord God, the only way to have unity in the community is to have Christ, no Christ, no unity, no spoken word, no Holy Ghost, no full assurance, no convictions, no testimonies, no change. So God, we pray that we become the change that's necessary to fulfill your goal for Michigan City. You have a goal for Michigan City. And it starts, God, with repentance, turning away from idols as they did in, in Thessalonia and turning to the true and the wise God. God, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for our visitors today. Thank you for our visitors that stopped by today, God. We bless your name for them, God. We pray that they don't be led by the sight of their eyes nor reproved by the hearing of their ears, but they're led by the Holy Spirit, God. They were here for such a time as this to hear, God. I pray, God, that they take something with them, Lord God, to be used, Lord God, for kingdom building. In the name of Jesus and us at Temple Worship Center, even those our members who have gone astray, we pray in God for them now in the name of Jesus Christ. They will return to the body of Christ, God, if not here, some church. For Father God, you said we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And God, you mean that. They are sitting at home with gifts. 
we're, 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 we're sitting uh, at the beach, God, on, on Sundays and on days of worship, God, and other places, God, we're necessary to serve you, God, so that the, the world can see that, that you're still moving through the vehicle of the church. Help us, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to continue to have revival in our own self. It's in Jesus' master's name, and for his sake we pray, amen. 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 Come on, give God a praise, amen.